Hey everybody, welcome to Supply, okay? We just had a series of videos on demand. We're moving on to supply. We're gonna be talking about supply versus quantity supply. We gotta get that relationship down. I know some of you guys might be already tired of it, but we gotta get it down, it's so important. And also we're gonna be looking at two manifestations of supply. We can do supply in an algebraic expression and we can do supply graphically. So that's what we mean by the two manifestations. So. Let's start off over here on the left-hand side of the board. Supply function. Anytime your professor says supply, what they're really saying is the supply function. Those two terms are synonymous. What is supply? It's a function. It's a relationship. It's a relationship between two variables. And I think you might know what those variables are. It is price and quantity supplied. Now the interesting thing is, and don't be scared of this, okay, but it, it is important to kind of get this down. Price is actually the independent variable, and you're going to be you're going to understand why we emphasize that on econ busters. Okay, it's kind of important to get deep understanding. Price independent variable, quantity supplied is the dependent variable. If you're already getting ahead of me, thinking of the graph and thinking, hey, P is on the vertical axis, price is on the vertical axis. How's that the independent variable? Because economists have switched the axes when they talk about supply and demand. That's just the way it is. All right, so supply function. It's a function, it's a relationship between price and quantity supplied. What does supply tell us? Tell us. Supply tells us the quantity supplies that we're gonna get, the different quantity supplies that we're gonna get at every single price point. All right, let's go to an algebraic expression. So I'm gonna just make up one, okay? We know that quantity supplied is a function of price, okay? Quantity supplied is a function of price. Let's make up one. Quantity supplied equals plus 2p, it's gonna be a very simple one, minus seven, okay? Quantity supplied equals plus 2p minus seven. Now, there's some things I just made up out of thin air and could have put anything in. The two and the seven, those constants, those values, pulled them out of thin air, any numbers will work. However, that positive and that negative have to be there. That positive, what does this positive right there mean? It means when price goes up, quantity supply goes down. Oops, whoa, that's not what it means, it's a positive number. When price goes up, quantity supply goes up, and that's kind of important because that is the law of supply. Just because I messed that up, let's make sure we got that right, right? Price goes up, quantity supply goes up, positive relationship, positive relationships, law of supply. Also, if price goes down, quantity supply goes down. Now, why is this a negative, okay? That's gonna be a little bit interesting. And for me to fully explain why that's a negative, let me pop over to the supply curve, all right? Now this is gonna be interesting. For this graph, I'm actually extended out into negative territory, okay? In the end, it's not gonna be that important, but just right here at the, at the beginning, we wanna see this negative territory, why? Because that negative seven, I know you might be thinking it's the vertical axis intercept, because that's what it is in math, but since we switched the independent and the dependent variable right over there, this thing is the horizontal axis intercept. So, right there, negative seven. Crazy. Okay, so we're never going to supply a negative seven. That's right. So what we, what we want to know is at what price will the quantity supplied be one? Let me say that again. What we really want to know is what, at what price will the quantity supplied be one? How are we going to figure that out? I'm going to go back to the algebraic expression. Quantity supplied, I'm going to make it equal to one. 2p minus 7. Not hard to solve, right? Bring the 7 over. We've got the 8. 8 equals 2p. Divide both sides by 2. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to jump right to the end. Price, $4, okay? So we're not going to supply anything until we get to a price of $4. Once we get to a price of $4, we'll supply a unit. So I'm going to go to 1 right there. Move it up right up to here about, okay? Four dollars draw dash 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 hopefully i didn't cover that up too much these are just dash lines they're not really even important i'm even dashing it all the way till i get to one and once i get to one that's when the supply function really matters then i'm going to draw the straight line like that and there's supply that's the way supply looks okay so over these ranges of values any price less than four hey you know what coin supply is going to be it's going to be zero any price less than four coin supply is going to be zero but if that price makes it to four or goes higher quantity supplied now is a positive amount okay this is just a very straightforward introduction to supply focusing on supply the function quantity supplied is the is the amount that will be supplied at a particular price point. Supply, that is the quantity supplied at all, and that's gonna be the different quantity supplies at various price points. Hopefully that made some sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.